Welcome back to the channel. Going to be going over some basic BVR fundamentals in uh, could work in BMS or DCS. Today I'm going to talk about the air-to-air -air basic brevity terms, BVR grinder tactics, common grinder mistakes, formation standards, sorting standards, and the BVR timeline fundamentals. Here are some of the basic air-to-air -air brevity terms. Highlighted some of the ones that you need to know. The top five. So here's the bandit. Uh, means enemy in accordance with theater ID criteria. Sometimes each game they use it interchangeably, so bandit usually means enemy. Bogey, so people get that mixed up. Bogey is unknown, so the AWACS does not know what it is. So it is not enemy, it's not friendly, it does not know what it is, unknown. Defensive is when someone is defending a either a missile from an air-to-air -air threat or surface-to-air missile. And they usually say defensive SA3, defensive 29, defensive whatever, and they're unable to support you when they say that. Nails type usually say nails 29, nails fulcrum, or uh, it's only in the air-to-air -air regime is nails and, and spike. So spike is the radar lock, and then nails is the search. So if something's just out there looking around, you'll say nails 29. If it's locking onto you, making a really loud, annoying noise, it'll be spike 29. Or whatever it may be. These brevity terms are from the Brevity AFTTP 3-2.5. You can search it on Google and it has all the different brevities on there. So this is a simplification of the grinder tactic used in in air-to-air uh, -air combat. So the purpose is to always have an element aircraft hot. So you always want someone hot down, let's say hot is north. So you always want someone uh, north hot towards the target. If you're in a four ship, you'll split up into elements. So you'll have two elements here. And you'll split up into elements doing a, a rotation and then come back around back again. One goes hot, one goes cold, going hot. And this is basically what the a hot grinder legs looks like. Responsibility so going back and forth. Targets once they're hot. Radio priority. So if they need to do bullseye calls or uh, some bogey dopes or declares or um, defensive and fox threes, they have the radio. They are pr priority. So on the cold leg, they're developing the SA. They are listening to the picture. They are listening to bogey dopes that the hot element might be saying. They're checking surroundings, checking the data link, um, making sure they're developing that picture by listening to uniform and AWACS calling different uh, groups. So the cold element needs, know, needs to know when to turn in. They don't always need permission. Usually the, the flight lead has a, a separation of 10 miles, 20 miles, or 30 miles, but whatever those that distance is, that is about the time you need to start turning around. Or if the hot element foxes and is turning out, that is about the time you need to turn around as well. But mostly the most important thing is to, is to turn around when the hot element turns out to go cold and to make sure that you are at least the, the, br the brief distance between the elements. If you're all within five miles, then a, a grinder is not going to work out very well. Also, they receive data targets from the hot element. So the hot element could, could fox on something and say that there's a follow-on group five miles. The cold element will have to know that and be expect a, five, a, a group five miles behind a trailing group behind the uh, the group that the hot element la launched on also when the cold leg turns in they update the the out hot leg the hot leg coming out when the cold leg turns in they're saying okay the first the first group is turning cold second uh, targeted on the second group or the uh, the the trailing group splashes anything that you could see just update the the out leg for uh, different things like that. These are some cold ops. I won't be going over that here, but this is some stuff you can you could read and pause. So here are some of the common grinder mistakes that I've seen, and I I try to not do it myself. The biggest thing is that everybody is cold. When everyone is cold, the grinder goes out the window. So when everyone's cold, you need to develop a procedure or habit to get back into that grinder. So as a four ship, say everybody's a four ship. So this is incorrect. You have two bandits to your north, everybody's cold, and three decides to turn back around. So the reason why three should not turn back around is number one, they're closest. Number two, that's usually what the bandit is locking on to, uh, the last person in the in the flight there. So there's no reason for them to turn around because they're, they're really close. The correct way to do that would be that the farthest person, the furthest away from the threat, would turn back and try to de-louse everyone else. If you are one of these these flight members and you are spiked, then you should not turn hot anyway. You could be this person here. You could be this person here. And you could be spiked. You should not turn back because they're already locked onto you. The moment you turn back, 
that is the, the exact moment they will launch a missile at you. So you have to say, one would have to say one spiked, and then two would have to, to know where they are, situational awareness, where they are in this formation, and turn around as well. Or turn around uh, in, in, in a replacement of one, because everybody else is closer. The aircraft with the greater distance to the threat should turn hot. So it's not always going to be lead. Two could be up here, four could be up here. Like, it just depends. Whoever is hot, whoever is furthest away should turn hot. It's all about, all about situation awareness. Another thing I've noticed is lack of communication. So the hot leg, or the cold leg not listening. So the cold leg is doing their cold stuff, and then they come back around, and they don't know what's going on. So that, that's a mistake. You need, to be, you need to be able to listen to the hot leg and understand what's going on before you turn hot. Also, the in-hot leg, so the cold leg trans transitioning to hot leg, is not giving updates to the out-hot leg. So the, the cold leg coming in hot is not giving updates to the out-hot leg. They just come in and they just start foxing. It's like, and then it, they don't know what's going on. Um, need to, you need to communicate that to your, to your out leg so, so, you know, um, so, so they know what you're doing. So when they come back in, they know what to do afterwards. This is a big one. So not turning with your lead. If you're number two and your lead turns cold, two, you need a you need to turn cold anyway. Even if you did if you didn't fox, if you continue continue hot, you're just gonna get closer and closer. So you need, so two, the wingman needs to turn off even though you did not shoot. Always follow your lead. Another thing is being too close together. So you have two elements should be two separate elements. If they're within five miles, then it's not, it doesn't even matter. You're, you're all in the same situation. If one person gets locked on or foxed at, you're all within five miles, so you're all technically in the same situation of defending a missile. If you were separated 10, 20, 30 miles, then you can actually have two separate situations and you can actually support each other uh, separately because you're, you have that difference in, in distance. Here's some of the formation standards. So the the, the best tactical formation is line abreast. These numbers are subjective, so you can do whatever you want, but one nautical mile is 6,076 feet. So this is one nautical mile. This is about one and a half nautical mile. So you have that space to be line abreast up to 20 degrees. That is line abreast. So one to one and a half nautical miles is a good line abreast. As for up and down, 5,000 up or 5,000 down. So it just depends on what your lead wants. There, here are some of the hook turns. I won't be going over that here. I have a video on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and take a, take a look at it. But hook turns are the best way to turn in a line of breast formation. Because you could both say hook left or hook right, and you'll both turn around, and you're still in line of breast. So this is something I haven't seen anywhere on online, but this is a sorting standard. So I've created this little graphic here to kind of give you a general idea. So this will all depend on the air picture at the moment, but knowing and understanding the standards will increase effectiveness. So if this is go if you're going into an engagement and you already know what the standard is, there is not really reason to, to talk back and forth over the radio. So if you're going in, this, this is lead, this is number two, you're going in, there's two people, it's azimuth. So the lead could say sort azimuth, or one could say sorted left, and two would automatically be sorted right. Also, two could have uh, a lock first and could say two sorted right because they're on the right side of this. So two sorted right, and that automatically means that one is sorted on the left, and that's easy. And the default is uh, if you're on the left, you shoot the left. If you're on the right, you're on the right. It could be swapped. Just, you, you know what I mean. So it just makes sense. Ele elevation is standard by the lead will take the higher elevation and the wingman will take the lower elevation. So one could be like sorted high guy or sorted high or sorted 32,000. Automatically two would be sort the 15,000. So it'd be like two sorted low, one sorted high. If two got a lock on the lower one first and they know about the higher one, they'd be like two sorted 15,000. One would sort the 32,000. On the range, since lead usually has more situation awareness, they will take the leader in a group. Two will take the trailer. If you come up to a situation like this, one could say sorted leader. Two would say sorted trailer. Or the two, two locks onto something or sees the group first, says two sorted trailer. Automatically one says sorted leader or could not say anything at all. It's just, it's just a, a sorting standard that you have to trust your wingman to be able to, to, to sort silently sometimes. And these sorting standards help a lot when it comes to, 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 to comms and, and alleviating some of the, the, the voices on, the, on uniform and, and victor. Get pretty complicated, but for this video, I'll be going over the basics. 
So for the most part, you need to know the minimum targeting range, which is the min it's the minimum range where you could sort the group and actually give give targets to people and and conduct a effective intercept. Don't worry about the short skates. We'll, I'll go over that in the next video. But the next thing you need to know is the minimum abort range, MAR. So this, sometimes the flight leads will give a MAR. So let's have an example, 18 miles is the MAR. So if you're able to stay out of, out of 18 miles, you should be fine. So just make sure you're looking at the, the distance to your, your target that you're locked onto and making sure you're looking at this M pole here. If this M pole is less than MAR, that means you have to turn off sooner than, than you would expect. But make sure you're looking at the range between you and the and the lock target. If you turn out before MAR, you should be okay. And usually, at least the first shot will be R opt. So usually pitch up to the loft angle and you shoot very rarely. And try not to do it on purpose. Don't shoot at T R T R because that's way too close for, for, for you. So make sure you shoot at R opt and make sure you get the free the free distance with the loft. And that's about it. I'll have the next video here soon. But hopefully you learned something and as always, like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.